Hello and welcome to the Fairy Little Knitting Podcast. I'm Marsha, also known as Fairy Little, and this is my podcast all about knitting and other crafty things. And today I'm going to talk to you about things that I'm working on. I don't think I have any finished objects, so things I'm working on and... and jibber jabber. <laughs> so let's get to it shall we thank you everyone for your birthday wishes and for all of the beautiful comments and also thank you so much to those of you who sent me patterns i really appreciate it and it just made my birthday that much more special so thank you so much i have a wor work in progress that had to go on the back burner well it didn't have to i could have still worked on pieces but i didn't until I got some pieces for it. So I started this a few weeks ago and it is the Mr. Fitzwilliam Fox and it is by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears podcast who is a lovely designer. She does an amazing job with her designs. They have great picture tutorials and I started this. I'm going to knit three of them and they are knit out of, or will be knit out of, Cascade Yarns in the Venetia Worsted, which is a, it's like a braided yarn, and it is 70% merino wool and 30% silk, so super, super soft. In the colors that I was looking for, our yarn shop didn't have very much selection in these specific colors that I was looking for and then I have this white opal yarn that I am using for the features but the reason this got put on hold was because this cute little guy calls for not only eyes but a nose weird that a fox would have a nose but he does so I already had the eyes because I purchased the eyes when I did the Mr. Bakery Bears and my baby bakery bear that I made. So I had to order some more. So these just, just came in. They're still in the bag. And I ordered these through Amazon. And they come with all of the back pieces. These are safety noses. So what safety noses are, if you or and safety eyes, what they are, if you don't know, is they are the pieces that create the nose and the eyes, but they're like buttons, but they, they're not sewn in. They are connected with pieces that are made so that kids, if they chew on them, they won't choke on them. They stay put where they need to stay. So these ones come in a whole bunch of different sizes. These are all different sizes, each one of these. And they are super cute. So here, I'll show you. Ooh, that one's trying to get mixed up in the others. Isn't that a cute little nose? Super cute little nose. I love it. It's adorable. So these noses are very nice. They're going to belong to a couple Mr. Fitzwilliams. And I'm going to keep them for other other bears and things that I, I create. I've done in other uh, bakery bears toys that I've made. I've done stitched on noses, but I just really wanted to do that quick nose because I feel like that is perfect. And I wanted to make it as close to how it was designed as possible. So, so that is one thing that I'm working on and we'll get more done. The next thing that I have been working on is my Kalalotch pants. These are fabulous. They are almost done. I should be able to get them done in the next couple days and then I'll be able to wear them. Then I'll be able to wear them. I'm super excited excited. They are by they're by Andrea Wrangle and or Wrangel. I I don't know how to say her name. And I'm knitting it in Lorna's Laces hand dyed yarn in the pewter colorway. And it's Shepherd Sport. 
It's 100% superwash merino wool. So that's the color. I thought a nice dark gray would be really good to knit them out of because they will go with so many things. I will be wearing, whatever I wear is going to have, it's going to be long at the back because it's knit. So unless I'm wearing something under it, see, you can see the light through it. So uh, yeah. So I'll be wearing some sort of dress or something with it to go with it. And this knit is super intuitive. I knit the cables. It's So it's a four row repeat and that doesn't really give anything away. And I knit the cables without a cable needle. So it's going super, super fast. I heard about knitting cables without a cable needle from Katie from inside number 23. And so of course I had to look it up and find out what, what this was. And there's some great tutorials on YouTube for doing knitting cables without a cable needle. So you can just take a, take a peek around because there's so many different formats that there might be one that suits you better than another one. And it doesn't make one wrong. It just makes it different and it will, it will be uh, appropriate for a different person. And if it's not your taste, then that's fine. Find a different one. It's cool. It's all good. So, so this is the last little bit. I don't have a ton left. Uh, it's kind of like Sleeve Island, except it's going a little bit faster than Sleeve Island. It does have some holes that I need to, that I will need to grab a couple pieces of yarn and just tighten up, bring together. See, there's a juicy hole there. And it's just because of how the stitches are picked up in that section and how many stitches are picked up. This is right in right between the legs. So these are some spots that definitely need to be uh, picked up and, and brought in. I just did it as the pattern said. Normally when I pick up stitches, I pick up an extra stitch on the outside of whatever stitch I'm picking up and that tightens it and then I, and then I knit two together or whatever to bring that in so that there's no hole. But I thought I would just do it as the pattern called for so I wouldn't get lost in what I was doing or where where I made the last change. So I'll be getting some long strands of yarn and I'll, I'll weave it in and, and close those up and you won't be able to tell at all that they were there. So these are very fun to knit. Um, they are, they have been on the needles for over a year now. I started knitting them for Knit City last year is when I started. And so they'll be finished this year after Knit City. <laughs> So they, they're looking great. I'm really excited about them. They're going to be super comfortable. I haven't tried them on yet and I'm not going to until they are completely done. I'm a bit of a different size now than I was when I started knitting them. So hopefully they still fit. If not, they'll go in my cupboard until they do fit because I've just got extra curves going on right now, which is fine with me. So that is actually... That's it for knitting content, but I wanted, we're gonna go straight into jibber jabber now. Uh, I did not talk last week about my birthday, but if you were on Instagram, you will have seen that I took you guys to, some, to do some shopping. My daughter's birthday is two days after mine. So I picked up uh, some of her birthday presents and one of those things is I got her the Wizard of Oz book collection. She's a big, big reader. So, so I got her this Wizard of Oz book collection because hopefully that will last her a week, maybe two, maybe. And she just reads books over and over and over. She reads constantly. She loves it. So we encourage it. She's got an e-reader and she's got paper books. She just, she loves everything bookish. And so we got her that and I went to, she's been asking for, she asked me to teach her how to design clothes for dolls. So I got her to draw a little doll shape and I showed her what measurements you need to take and, and how to write them down and then how to transfer that onto a piece of fabric. And then, um, then, you know, the, the salvage that you need for actually stitching the garment that you're making. And then we made this cute little dress. It was super, super adorable. 
but she uh, she wanted knitting so or sewing supplies for her birthday and fun little fun little sewing supplies so I got her some like four inch pink fringe I got her some like uh, um, tutu fabric um, you you know what it's called you're telling me right now um, I'll come back to that. I got her some fake fur in blue. I got her some animal print fabric in blue and black. She likes lots of patterns. She likes lots of color. I don't know where she gets that from. Okay, I gotta do. <laughs> so she, I got her tons of color. I got her um, little pieces that go along the bottom of, of things with the like little, uh, little plastic doodads that jangle super cute she's loved it so I also picked up some fabric for myself and I'm going to share it with you and I'm very excited about it I have not decided what I'm going to sew with it yet but I'm hoping to sew something I have other patterns that I have actually all cut out ready to sew so I really just sew. I really just need to sew some things <laughs> So I really just need to sew my garments together that I have cut out already. Um, yeah, I just need to take time to do that. I'm going to set up a sewing machine as well for my daughter because she wants to learn. She knows how to do like general things with the sewing machine, but she really wants to learn how to use the sewing machine. So I'm going to teach her how to do that. And then I'll just leave it set up so that she can just sew with it whenever she wants to. But uh, yeah, so picking up stuff for her birthday, I also picked up this beautiful, beautiful fabric that I'm going to sew a dress out of. And it is super soft and I can't, it's not, it's not a cotton, it's a very, so it is a rayon fabric and it's plaid but it's very light and it's very it's just very soft and pretty and it's got a like um, gold stitching in it I don't know if you could see that it's got gold and blue and like a burgundy and pink and white it's just super pretty so this is going to be a dress and I haven't decided which one yet but it definitely is going to be a dress and I'm very excited about that. I need I need some more handmade clothes. I used to make a lot of my own clothes, but I haven't for for a few years. Um, knitting has kind of taken front and center of that. So hopefully in the next little while, I'll be able to show you some more clothing that is sewn up and that could be a thing. I did take you guys shopping. And one of the places I also went, besides the bookstore and the fabric store, was supportive garment shopping because I feel like there's only so much a sports bra can do and that's kind of where I was living and I needed something that was more supportive and I thought that no better time to get something than on my birthday and I found beautiful beautiful option and so that was probably the highlight of my day was getting something that fit me properly and I I can't say enough about uh, proper fitting under things. <laughs> so I'm just going to leave that there. On the last episode, I talked about a trip that I took over the summer. Before that trip, I went to another knitting event, and I wanted to talk about that here. That knitting event was fiberphilia and it was in New Denver and I was actually a teacher at the event and it was really good and I don't think I've spoken about it on the podcast I've spoken about it to other people quite a few other people but just with how well it went talked to other people about how well it went and how much fun I had but I wanted to just talk with you guys about it so I taught brioche at fiberphilia and it was it's a really it's a very low key event. It's uh, it's getting bigger. Uh, last year was the first year. This year was the second year, and it got bigger this year. They had a bigger venue. They had more classes. 
more classes geared towards a bunch of different things. There was quilting in, in there, which was really cool. And there was yarn dyeing and then me with my brio stitch. And the class size was, it was perfect. So I got there, it was an all day class. I've run an all day brioche class before. And it was an all day class. I had eight students and it was, it was so nice. It was like the perfect number. It was either five or eight students. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure it was eight. Yeah. I believe it was eight students, but it's the perfect number. So I, I could show everything. Everybody could see everything I was doing and then I could go one on one with everybody and and everybody in my class enjoyed it so much. Um, all of the responses were positive. They, you know, I just, I went away from that class just feeling like my cup was overflowing. Everybody who had been in my class enjoyed it. They wanted the next steps in brioche knitting. They, um, they, they talked to the lady who, who ran it, Kathy, and they just had nothing but nice things to say about my class, which was super, super wonderful because I was anxious about teaching, teaching the class. Um, I enjoy teaching and, but it's a skill. Like teaching is a skill, yes. But teaching a new skill is more difficult than working through a project or, or answering questions or going through, um, using skills somebody already knows and applying it to a new idea. That's different than learning a new skill. You use different parts of your brain and it and it can become exhausting and frustrating. And, and if you walk into a class and you've already decided that you don't wanna learn, then you're right, you're not going to learn because you're already there in your head, you're already frustrated. And I have a really good example of this, <laughs> of this with myself. We implemented a new uh, computer program at work, and and it's not my favorite kind of program. It's a kind of program that I've I've learned those kinds of programs before. They're they're simple to use, but it's um, but I just like realized while I was doing my training that I personally was having a bad attitude about it. it. Had nothing to do with the teacher. She was great, and she could only respond in a way that, you know, to me being in my bad attitude that, that just, I was responsible for. She was not responsible for, for, the only thing she was responsible for was to present the material. What I was responsible for was to take in that material and learn it. That's what I was responsible for. And, and having a poor attitude, when I realized that I had a poor attitude, I changed it, of course, because, because I knew that it was me and it had nothing to do with the experience, the learning part. The experience I was having in that situation, though, was a complete reflection of my own personal attitude. If I'd gone in there with an attitude like, I can do this, this is gonna be great, this is gonna be an amazing program, and let's let's move forward, it would have been easy peasy. But I definitely had to check myself and put my ego at the door and be like, okay, I just need to learn this. And the problems I am having is not with anybody but it's my own attitude going into this. So that is something when a teacher is teaching a new skill, that is something, not a new approach to something using old skills, but a new skill that somebody has never learned before and they walk in thinking that they possibly are not gonna learn this or they're already frustrated because they've tried it before and they don't understand and they need that extra encouragement that is what teachers come up against so I knew that coming into this brioche class that I could be coming into a room of people who had already made up their mind that this was going to be hard and that is very difficult to work with and to not respond to the emotion from the person that is coming out 
And I know none of you guys have ever gone into a class thinking that that you won't learn it and you've already given up before you even started. I know you guys haven't done that. Mm -mm. The class that I worked with in New Denver, they were there to learn. They Some of them had tried it and had already knit some things and they were so positive. They were ready to learn. When they made mistakes, they didn't get frustrated. They just worked through it. I made sure that we had breaks every hour and a half. So it was every hour and a half. I encouraged everybody to get up and walk away from their knitting. Get up, walk away. When you come back, we're going on to the next thing. Because you already know it. You're just It's just practice now. So they'd get up, go get a drink of water, do whatever they needed to do, get fresh air, separate themselves from the learning of the new skill, come back refreshed, ready for the next step. And it worked so smoothly. I, that class was lovely. These women were there. They were present. They were ready to learn. They would laugh when they made a mistake and they would just, and I don't think any of them were mistakes. They were all learning opportunities because if somebody slipped a stitch wrong or whatever, it was the perfect opportunity to take that moment and show everybody in the class how to fix that, which was perfect because then I didn't have to go into like, I think that way we hit every single mistake you can make in one color and two color brioche. They learned how to fix it and it was, done in such a fun way and it was such a positive positive experience and I can't say enough about about the ladies who were there because they made it they made it that positive experience and and they ended up all they all left and they all knew how to brioche and a good portion of them wanted to do the next steps in brioche so I'm very excited about that. It turned out so well. I'm so, so happy with how that went. Um, so that went really well and, and it was very positive. I just want to let you all know that Fiberphilia is going to be coming back in the spring. Uh, at the It's in June, I do believe. And it is such a cute town. New Denver is, it's one of my favorite places to go. So we brought the kids and we brought brought Edith, my trailer, and we went camping and the kids explored and they had a great time. And I went and did yarny things and then hung out with them after. It was, it was such a brilliant weekend. It was so relaxed. It was so nice. And, and I got to hang out with all of the lovely yarnies. So it was... It was pretty wonderful. So on that note, that is it for me for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate every single one of you and every single one of you who comes back. I appreciate that too. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe below. I um, am super excited about the things that are coming in the future. I'm going to be taking a trip and that is very soon. By the time you see this, I will be packing to go on my way. So I'm going to pre-record a couple episodes so you have them while I'm gone. And we don't have our tickets booked yet. That's happening. But in the ne next episode, I will let you know where Nick and I are going. So thank you so much again for joining me. Uh, and yeah. Until next time. Yeah. Nearby. Hopefully you'll find something to your taste. And if not, you could always make a video that is to your taste. <laughs> it's like, I think it's Lycra. And we've got like a floof sticking out. <laughs>